All right, we got people coming in. <sighs> Happy Tuesday, everyone. Welcome to our GSN webinar. I'm Joanna Roach with GSN Planet. We are super excited to have our partner Universal Companies with us today, and they've been working with us on this past um, couple of months on this series that we've been doing around education um, for spots. And so today we are fortunate to have with us uh, Kristen Dean, who is the uh, digital campaign manager for UCO. And she is going to share with us some of her expertise on email best practices for spas and salons. So welcome, Kristen. We also have Peter Plishka on our call, who is a former board member of GSN Planet with UCO now, who is kind of our associate moderator these days, and <laughs> Megan, who's in the control room, um, working all of the tech to make all of this happen. So thanks for being here, everybody, today. We're thrilled to have you. And um, Peter, I think you probably want to say a couple of things before uh, Kristen gets started, so I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thanks, Jenna. Yeah, yeah, so I do just want to welcome you to episode five of our six-part series um, that GSN sort of been graciously letting us uh, host, hosting us on. So we're, um, uh, we've had a really good response. So we really appreciate the kinds of questions that have come through. We were talking about this earlier, that the questions that have come through from the people that have registered have really helped not only shape the presentations that the team is giving, but it helps us in our thinking when we're um, you know, looking at our efforts in marketing, um, you know, what people out there are doing, what tools they're using, what they know, what they want to know. So um, we really appreciate having this platform to have more conversation with, uh, with the industry. So today, as Joanna said, we're going to talk about email marketing. And um, Kristen Dean, who um, she's been at Universal a little over two years, but she has over 10, she has over 10 plus years uh, in the marketing uh, arena. Uh, she's worked with multiple brands on lead generation, database management, email campaigns, and measuring performance. I've worked with Kristen for a little over a year, and I'll say that um, the most fun part, I think, about email campaigns is finding out what happens after they go out. <laughs> you know, how did they work? Uh, what are people responding to? Um, how did we get it all wrong, <laughs> you know, and how did we get it right? So um, I know that that's one thing Kristen's really great at is analyzing the results of the email campaigns and sharpening uh, the tools for the next one. So um, I'll turn it over to Kristen for her presentation. Okay. All right. Thank you, Peter. Okay, let me share my screen. All right, so like Peter said, we're gonna talk about um, email best practices today. And I am really excited to be talking about this. Like I said, I've been doing it for, you know, about 10 years now, and I'm very passionate about it. And like you said, I like seeing the results and what works, what didn't work, and continuing to test things. Um, so kind of here's what we're gonna to cover today. We're gonna to talk about sort of how to build and maintain your email list to get started sending the types of emails uh, you should be sending and some even some examples, um, the basics of building out an email, how to measure the performance of your emails, and then some marketing tools and resources sort of just to get you started. And then as we're going through it, if you have any questions, just type it in the chat and uh, someone will let me know and we can uh, try to answer them as we go along. So. The Big question is, should you be sending email? You know, maybe you've read or heard things that said, you know, email's dead, it doesn't work. That's wrong, that uh, you should be sending email. Um, social media is a great tool. And yes, you can reach lots of people out there, but oftentimes customers may not see your posts. You know, Facebook controls when and where your posts are seen. Whereas email is gonna give you that one-to-one -one relationship with your customer. It also helps you strengthen that relationship 
because you were able to reach out to them and touch base with them um, at intervals that you want. You could also use it to generate more business and increase appointments. And I'm going to show you how we can do that. So first we're going to talk about how to build your list because you need a list before you can start sending. So the quickest way to start building a list is if you have a website, put a sign up link on your website. So I pulled some examples here. Um, just this was like a pop up that uh, Face House had on theirs. Just real simple, stay in touch. You know, just asking for their email, their first name. And then here's another one I kind of just had mocked up. You know, you put your email address in. Um, when you're asking for their email address, you want to be sure to tell them what they're going to expect because this helps set the stage on what they're going to get from you when they get their emails and kind of builds that trust. So in this case, you know, it's saying you're going to get access to special offers, self care tips and more and definitely makes it sound more interesting because, you know, hey, I want to know what these tips are. So I'm going to give you my email address and I'm going to sign up. And another great way is to provide an incentive because everybody loves a deal. So, you know, offer 15% off um, their next service, or if you sell retail, maybe 15% off their next retail purchase. Let's see here. Um, the other option is um, if you have like an online store or appointment booking system, you know, see if there's an option to add a checkbox in your checkout process. So it's just real easy, you know, so they can check that box. I'm sure you've seen it. Like if you've bought something online, you know, in the checkout, there's probably like, do you want to subscribe to our newsletter? You know, something as simple as that, you know, and if you don't have a website, you could just, you know, print off some little leaflets to have on the counter. So as the customer's checking out, just be like, you know, hey, would you like to sign up for our newsletter? Have them fill out their email address, and then you can add them to your database that way. You can still offer a discount if you want to, and, you know, kind of talk to it, just make it part of the checkout process while they're doing that. Doesn't have to be anything too complicated. So any questions so far? We good? Okay. Okay. Not yet. Okay. So once you've built up your list and you've got um, some subscribers on your list, it's really important that you want to keep that list clean and engaged for email deliverability. Uh, so like all, you know, the Gmails, Yahoo, Hotmail, they're very strict about getting emails into the inbox because there's a lot of people out there who don't abide by the rules. And so you, you want to make sure you do so you go in the inbox and not the spam folder. And so if you have an engaged list, and, and by engaged, I mean like they're opening your emails or clicking your emails. Um, that sends positive signals to those domains to like Gmail and Hotmail that these are good subscribers and you're sending them content that is engaging. And also, but keeping a clean list. Um, so like taking out people who aren't engaging. So maybe if you've got people who've moved away and aren't interested in your services anymore. So they're maybe not opening your emails. You'd want to remove them from your list because that can um, be damaging. And the other big thing is understanding and following the Can Spam Act, which is important for anybody that sends emails, uh, small to large companies. Um, and the big thing about the Can Spam Act is it just sets your rules for commercial emails and establishes requirements. And you have to give recipients the right to have you stop emailing them. And you could, there is more information on the FTC government website. It's, it's not meant to be intimidating. It is pretty straightforward to follow. And I'm going to go through some do's and don'ts, sort of just to walk you through that to get started. And then you're welcome to also read more information on that as well. Let's see. So on the CAN spam, some basic rules to follow. In every email you send, you need to tell them where you're located. And that's just your physical postal address, just at the bottom of the footer of the email. You know, just go, a good example is if you get emails from some any company, look at the bottom of the email. Um, they're most likely, or there should be, <laughs> um, a postal address for that company. You have to provide a clear and obvious way to 
up to their email. Most companies will use unsubscribe, which you can see in this screenshot down below, and that, that will link to an unsubscribe, which is usually controlled by whatever email sending platform you're using, which I'll go over some of those at the end. Um, you can use unsubscribe, opt out, manage your preferences. I mean, it just needs to be clear and obvious to the user how they can be taken off your list. And then that request has to be honored within 10 business days. And the other thing is just you need to be aware of what others are doing on your behalf. So if you've like contracted with someone to manage your email database, just know what they're doing and make sure they're, they are following the rules. And so here's a few things you don't wanna do. You don't wanna use false or misleading information from like your from to a reply, um, reply to must be accurate. So in this example below, and I'll go over some more of this for building your email, like your from in email address. So in our case, universal companies, we wouldn't want it to say anything but universal companies because that's who we are. If we said we were, you know, big lots or something that would be deceiving because that's not who we are and we need to represent who we are um, don't use deceptive subject lines so don't sell your email addresses so if you've collected them those people have agreed to receive email from you and only you so don't sell them to somebody else and if they've opted out don't email them again you basically you, you can't okay any questions on that? Let's we'll move on to the next section. Well, we, Kristen, we do have a question that maybe relates to um, what you earlier said about maintaining a list. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes businesses change hands. Yep. So if you inherit, you buy a business and you inherit, um, you know, an email list, is there an easy way to sort of check in and make sure that list is good and clean and yeah, so what I would suggest is if you've inherited that list, so the first thing I would do is maybe send an email and reach out to that list of customers and tell them what happened. Say, hey, you know, um, you know, I recently, this is who I am. I've purchased a business from, you know, who the previous owner was, and this is, I'd like to be able to send you emails. This is what I've and explain what you what you plan to send them so that they know what to expect from you and but then give them the option to, to opt out from your emails so that way if you know they aren't interested they can opt out and move forward mm -hmm. so that's how i would approach it the best way give them the option tell them what happened just be straight and clear about what's going on yeah i would think it'd be a good opportunity to introduce Mm -hmm. your personality to them or you yep. know, what your approach to the business is going to be if they've had some familiarity with it. Yep, definitely. Now I would, the only thing I would caution is I might ask the previous owner when the last time they reached out to them. I mean, if it's been, I would say over a year since they've emailed those contacts, I would be cautious to email them because who knows if they still own that who knows if that customer still even has that email address. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just, you might be best to just unfortunately start over. I mean, you just, you kind of have to make your best judgment there. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. So, yeah. Okay. So something into a little more exciting, uh, <laughs> building, <laughs> building out some emails. Um, so here's some um, ideas for like types of emails, a spa or salon, uh, could send that could be interesting to customers that might help uh, drive business and keep engagement high for your emails. So uh, new or popular services that you're offering. So if you've updated your menu, maybe send out an announcement, um, you know, be sure to include benefits to the customer for those services. Maybe if it's a hair salon, you could offer seasonal styling tips. Um, specials that you might be running. Um, maybe if there's like, you've seen like a great, something that's trending for like hair or facials or massage, you, you could send out an email about that. Um, if you're running like a limited time deal, you could even do personalized offers. So if it's the customer's birthday, you could send out an offer 
you know, say happy birthday, here's 15% off your next service. Um, another great thing is if you've got last minute openings on your books, you could send out an email saying, hey, we have this last minute opening. Don't miss, you know, book this spot for whatever the service might be. And then you could also just set up appointment reminders, which is just, you know, a great, great touch point, reach out. Um, if you are rebooking services, if there's set times between the treatments that they need to rebook, or you could just do a follow-up after a service, check in, make sure they're doing okay, happy with their service. And then if you sell retail, either online or in your store, there's some great ways you could use email to um, promote those offerings as well. And here I'm gonna show some examples. So here's a, an example of it was someone's birthday and I will, so collecting a lot of the email platforms that you can use, there'll there's like fields where you can collect this information. So like when they sign up for your newsletter, you can ask for their birth date. So it'll be stored right there in the system, making it easy to access. So you could, have this email go out, sell them happy birthday. It's kind of a nice warm gesture. Here's enjoy 20% off your next service. Give them a call to action, get that um, appointment booked. Here's an example of someone who's maybe selling retail. And then you could tell them what your offers are. And then you could send them to your website if you have one to shop the specials. Or if you don't, and it's just, you have a retail area in your store only, you could have them, um, you know, visit our store to take advantage of this offer or, you know, give us a call, something like that to drive the action to get them to take advantage of that offer. So the other big thing I wanna point out about the emails is this footer area down at the bottom is a, something you should include in all of your emails. And it's a great way to drive, you know, traffic to maybe your social channels. So if you're on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, whichever ones they are. So if you always include those if you have them and then link back to your website if you have a website. Um, so maybe you can list out menu of services, your retail blog, um, whatever sections of your website there are great. And then as you'll see, we also have our postal address and our unsubscribe sections that we mentioned earlier. Okay, a couple more examples here. So here is an example of announcement of a new service. So this uh, beauty and spa, Isabel's, they're gonna be offering brow lamination. So they've sent out this email and it's a new service they're announcing. And they've got some great photography um, and a before and after photo, which is great for a customer to see. And then there's a few benefits, why brow lamination, why would they want that service? And then there's this great call to action, schedule your appointment. You can lead to your online booking system or you could, be, you could do call to schedule your appointment. And then here, we're just gonna send some, just some blog. So if you've got a website, and we talked about putting content on the website. So have your blog. So you're doing five hair care tips for spring, you know, and we're going to just send them to this blog and give us some hair care tips. So this is just a great touch point. Remind them that you're there, you're available, and you're just providing them some helpful information. So in this case, you're not necessarily trying to book an appointment or selling them something, but you're just keeping them, keeping you top of mind for them when they do need their next service because maybe they'll, ring, they'll read this and be like, oh yeah, I do need a haircut. And so then they'll reach out to you and make that appointment. Let's see. Excuse me. And so here we'll kind of break down sort of what makes up the different parts of the email. Your from and name address, which as we talked about before, needs to match the name of your company. In this case, we're looking at Ruby's Day Spa and it all matches who Ruby's Day Spa is. You've got your subject line of your email, which you wanna be sure is always enticing and interesting. This is like the first thing your customer is gonna see in their inbox. And so it should be representative of the email, but also interesting so they'll wanna open it up. 
you know, you should include your brand logo, your brand name, you know, and colors if you have them. So you're consistent and recognizable to the customer. Uh, you got your headline, you know, an image, copy, always have a call to action of what you want your customer to do. And then your basic footer information. I mean, and that's for the basic layout of an email. And then you can take it from there if you want more images, more copy, and, you know, and get creative. But this is a great place to get started. All right. All right, so when we're talking about the content of an email, you know, you want to try to provide a mix of content, sort of as we saw in the examples earlier, you know, don't just like sell. So like we saw, we had like the five hair care tips, we had new services, we had retail. So when you do that mix of content, it helps keep them engaged. And so you, they don't feel like they're constantly being sold to, you know, and so that's why you're you know, maybe if you're promoting a facial service, you can also provide the self-care tips. So they're getting, you know, they can look at both things, give hairstyling tips with a color promotion, you know, just try to provide a mix of stuff so that it's, you know, keeps it engaging and interesting to the customer. When you're designing your emails, and I will say a lot of the um, email marketing um, tools out there, they'll have pre-built templates for you, which is really great. And I would decide on one or two templates up front and then just stick with those until you get really comfortable because this is going to make it just go so much faster because you know, I need this size images, this much copy. And so it's going to save you lots of time and then you can move things along and schedule things out quickly. And you always want to make sure it looks good on mobile because more than 50% of people are going to read your emails on their phone and make sure it reflects your brand and you know, include your logo, stick to color palettes you use on web or social and always test your emails. You know, the best way to do that, send a test to yourself, check it in your email. What does it look like? Or send it to a friend, have them test it. Make sure there's, it looks nice. It's not typos and all the links work. Okay, anything there so far? Well, we've had a couple of questions. Um, yeah. I think that you're gonna get to, which is, well, you just talked about standardized formatting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Amy had asked whether, uh, about keeping it consistent. Mm -hmm. And then Donna was asking, and I think you're gonna talk about this soon, about subject lines. Um, yeah, I mean, but, so in, anything in particular about subject lines or? Well, just how do you come up with an enticing one? Uh, how do you come up with one that's a grabber? <laughs> Yeah, they're, uh, I don't have like a straightforward answer. So <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times I, what, so what I like to do is I go out and I subscribe to all sorts of newsletters and emails because I like to see what other people are doing. And so I take a lot of inspiration from that. And so what I might do is like, I might go find my favorite spa or salon or even my favorite retailer and go sign up for their emails and see what they're doing. And that you get a lot of inspiration from that. And then think about when you look at emails, what makes you wanna open it? And so, you know, a lot of times discounts are a great way to open, get an email open, but you can't always do a discount. So, you know, another way asking questions is always good because that piques their curiosity and they want to open it up. Um, let's see. Lists are always good too. That's always interesting to people if they want to, um, you know, they want to know what the full list is. So like, you know, the five tips for the hairstyling is always a good option. Um, you can also use like emojis in subject lines that sometimes that can also grab attention. You just don't want to overuse them. Uh, so those, I guess, a few tips to get started. <laughs> okay. All right, that's great. Yeah. Now we do have we, Kim. Kim asked one more question. This is uh, yeah. off off that topic, but um, her she doesn't offer online booking. So what kind of a call to action would be best for somebody who doesn't offer like a click through to online booking? Sure, I would do um, maybe call to book your appointment if that's how she's um, taking appointments or. 
if she does email, maybe, I guess, whatever her preferred booking method is, that make that the call, the action. And then if, it, if it's, if you are doing call, I would put the phone number in that call to action. So like call and then put the phone number to book your appointment. So that way they don't have to go look for the phone number. It's just right there. Because if you're also, if you're checking an email on your phone, you can just click through to. Yeah, yeah, most phones will like automatically format that phone number so you can yeah. just click it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Anything else? It's your great questions. Yeah, no. Yeah, that, subject lines like... is like, could be like a whole thing all on its own. <laughs> For sure. That's true. Yeah. Okay. We're good. Okay, great. All right. I'm going to hop into measuring performance, uh, which is one of my favorite things is because I love data. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how do I know if my email marketing is working? So most of the email sending platforms, they're going to provide you with some stats, some basic stats that's going to get you going. And um, they'll all have the same like opens and clicks, which we're going to go over. And then if you, there's often some benchmarks out there you can look at as well. And I'm going to provide some that I found. But the big thing is you, you want to, oops, I'm sorry, dogs are going to bark. You want to track your own stats and establish your averages because Every business is different and it's going to react a little differently. And then depending on the frequency that you send, you can track these monthly or weekly. So um, these are these, they're the two big ones, your open rate and your click through rate. So your open rate is the percentage of people who opened your email and the subject line is the key driver in this because that's the first thing they see. And it's usually calculated by the number of emails that are opened divided by the number of emails delivered. And then click-through rate is the percentage of people who clicked a link within your email. Mm -hmm. So it's number of clicks divided by emails delivered. Uh, so this would be a great gauge of like if, if the content was engaging. Um, so if like if you sent a blog, you know, and it, and it had a, a really great click-through rate compared to a blog you sent last month. So maybe, okay, so here's a better example. So this month you sent a blog about five hair care tips and it had like a 10% click through rate. But last year, you, last month you sent one about styling tips and it only had a 5% click through rate. So with knowing that, you'd probably wanna send more information about hair care tips because that's obviously more interesting to your customer. So you can use that information to decide what to send more or less of to your customers because that's what they find interesting. Um, conversion rate. So you can use this to the percentage of people who purchased. If you have, so you would use this if you have an online store or they booked an appointment. So you would do the number of conversions divided by number of emails delivered. And then unsubscribe rate is the number of people who unsubscribe from your list. So number of unsubscribes divided by emails delivered. And with the um, unsubscribe rate, you do want to kind of monitor that because if you notice your unsubscribe rate going up, then the, you're not, your emails aren't hitting the mark. So people, you're not sending them what you're, you're not sending emails your customers are interested in. And so you need to try and just keep an eye on that and make sure you're sending the type of content. So maybe if you're, you might adjust the mix. So if you find your unsubscribe rate is going up, maybe send more blog content and less selling content. Right? So maybe more education, less product and just kind of play with that a little bit and see if it can, you can decrease your unsubscribe rate. And then your bounce rate is a number of, it's a percentage of emails that were not delivered. Um, and this could be what factors into your bounce rate is maybe so could be the customer's email was invalid. So maybe they typed it in wrong, which happens quite frequently. Um, their inbox was full. Uh, that, there's, a, there's a number of factors that go into that, but the, this is hard bounces versus 
divided by email sent is your bounce rate. And then some benchmarks I pulled, I pulled this from a constant contact, they're an email marketing tool. And this was, they actually had it broken out by salon, spa, barber, business type. And so this was just some benchmarks that they provided um, based on data. So this might be a good place to start right when you start doing email to gauge against um, when you're monitoring them. But you also, it is important to track your own averages as well. So you can decide what, what is and isn't working. Excuse me. Okay, any questions on that? Um, Chris, and I have a quick question. Is yeah. Do soft bounces include if people have auto responses like vacation? It shouldn't, no, those shouldn't bounce. They should still go into their inbox. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here are some tools. So there are tons of email marketing tools out there. Um, I pulled a few in that just that I'm familiar with. Um, MailChimp and Constant Contact are sort of the two big ones out there. Um, I've I personally have used MailChimp and it's very easy and pretty straightforward to use. And they have a lot of their own help documents to help you through there. And with most of these, you can get started for free. Um, and they're generally based on the number of contacts you have in your database and then they tier them by prices. So, I mean, just to get started for free is, is a pretty great. I mean, so you can get in there, you know, test setting up your own templates and everything before you get going if you want to. And you could even, you know, set up an account and find, man, I really don't like this. And so then you can just switch to another one if you want to and you're not out any money. Um, but you could always, you can look into these and there, you could do just search for free email marketing tools to see what else is out there. And the other thing is if you have a booking software, you might see if they have an email marketing tool that easily integrates with it. I'm not familiar with them, so I don't, I'm not certain, but you might reach out to them and see. Um, and with all these email marketing tools, they most of them have great resources in their own. So like if you're struggling with something, reach out to them, check their help docs. Um, most likely they have an answer there. They're, they're really great about helping small businesses with their email marketing. Um, and then stock photos for your emails, um, Shutterstock, Unsplash, Pixabay, uh, Canva. Canva is great. They, I think, you know, you can get their paid plan for pretty minimal and get access to loads of images and you can resize them, um, put text over them. All the email examples I showed you earlier, I built with Canva and I'm just, you know, no time at all. So, okay, that's all I had. So <laughs> any other questions? Um, we have many, we have a question. Is there ever too many emails? Clients in the past have complained that they've received too many um, when we do one per day. Yeah, there, there, there are too many. Um, I would, you kind of have to experiment with your frequency a bit. I would maybe, you know, depending on your business, I would maybe start out at once per week and kind of go from there unless you feel like you really need to reach out to them, have something super important that you need to reach out to them more than that. Um, Cause daily is a lot, it depends on what you're sending. Um, so do a weekly, if you see unsubscribes are still going up, maybe back off to every other week and then monitor how that goes. You kind of just need to watch the unsubscribe rates and see how it goes and the feedback you get and adjust your frequency. Any other questions? I think it's a it's so great to have Kristen here to answer our question. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some too. And I know that oh, we I was, that was Kristen, that was super, super great. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, you're um, welcome. You know, I think that 
one of the things that people struggle with around email in general is they either think they're not creative enough or they don't have enough content to share. Yeah. And I don't think you need to be super creative because I, I'm a data person. Like I am not that super creative. Um, but that's the nice thing about like tools like Canva is they've got all these pre-built templates. So you just, and they've got all these images so you can go in and grab what you need. I mean, you, you kind of just need, let me see if I can find it. You just need one great image and a great headline. I mean, mm -hmm. so like here, you don't need a ton of content to go in there. Um, so you think that the response rate is mainly headline driven? Um, and, and what you're sending. Yeah. I mean, you don't need to have a ton of stuff in your email. You know, it can be it's just what you're promoting is really important. Is it, is it interesting to your customer? Is it what, is it going, is it a value to them? That's the big thing. Is it something, cause like, where's it? Like, so this like new, this brow lamination, if we had just said, Hey, we have a new service brow lamination that really doesn't give a lot of value to the customer, but by providing why they want that brow lamination and by the way, this could probably be a lot better because I'm not a lash and brow person. Um, but by providing that information, it provides a value to that customer. So it's a lot more interesting to them. So they're more likely to schedule that appointment and you know take action on that email. Okay. Is there, um, a lot of people ask, this was submitted, how often and what day and time should the emails be sent out? Yeah. So day and time, it kind of, it really depends on your business. Um, you know, I would guess with spas and salons, a lot of the customers are, this is just my pure speculation, are working during the day. So you might send over lunch, try sending over lunch hour or sending in the evenings when they're most likely to be checking their emails. But once again, you know, I would test it. So see, so maybe one week, send the email over the lunch hour and then see what was the open rate? What was the click-through rate? Then maybe the next week, send it in the evening hour. What was the open rate and click-through rate that time? And then compare them, which one did better. And so then if the afternoon hour did better, then continue sending your emails during that time slot. And then the same thing with the days, you know, kind of experiment with the days. Um, see what days, you know, the other thing you could do is think about, I don't know, I don't know if this is work, but if you like your call volume in your store, if people, if you notice that people are calling your store or your, um, at certain days or certain hours, you might try emailing at those days or hours as well because they're obviously looking to contact you then. So you could send them an email at those, try sending emails at those times as well. Good point. I think that's great advice. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank uh, you so much for being with us. Yeah, you're welcome. You are just Happy a wealth to. of knowledge. Um, <laughs> You are. Uh, Peter's Wi-Fi dropped out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I was so afraid that was going to happen to me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you just can't depend on anything. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we just got to roll with the punches. Yeah. Well, I, um, I just want to say thank you so much for being here and sharing your information. And thank Universal for being an incredible partner uh, yeah. to us. And we've had, I see several comments about wanting to make sure Sure, people can get a copy of the presentation. So I know that Megan will share this with you. And um, thanks, Kristen. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks right, so much. Bye.